I will be sharing the market potential of organic food products by PGS. Uh, this is a global and Asian perspective, but uh, not only the potential of PGS no, as for the market, but also as a climate change mitigation and adaptation strategy. We all know that Indonesia and Philippines are um, have a very similar situation in terms of climate change. So, yeah. Um, I will be discussing four uh, short topics. No, uh, well, um, focusing on the market potential of PGS and the PGS verified products. Of course, uh, the role of the government uh, with regards to the to the implementation of PGS and uh, conclusion. So, yeah, my organization is called Masipag. So, Masipag is actually a Filipino term for diligent. This is actually the characteristics of, of uh, uh, main characteristic of many farmer. But Masipag is also an acronym. Uh, it is uh, the acronym. It is uh, magsasaka at siyentipiko para sa pagulad ng agricultura or as what Do Dr. Silke mentioned that uh, uh, it means Farmer Scientist Partnership for Development uh, in English. So we basically work for um, farmers' rights. Uh, and uh, empowerment of farmers no, for them to uh, regain control of their of the land, uh, seeds, technology, knowledge, and of course, market. So we work mainly with uh, small-scale farmers organization here in the Philippines and of course with, with scientists uh, and NGOs. So, um, and also I, I sit as a member of the I-1 PGS committee and I have... Uh, work with many PGS initiatives here in Asia, some of which I will be sharing uh, later. Um, so I will be discussing about PGS. So what is PGS? I know that the farmers who, who are here uh, already know what PGS is. But of course, it, it's a kind of certification uh, mainly to distinguish um, organic from other products. No? And, uh, we already know that, this, that it is more appropriate for small-scale uh, organic producers, uh, mainly because of the reduction uh, in cost, because we, we know that uh, third-party certification, especially the international certifiers are very costly, you know, very expensive for small-scale producers. I saw in the video that uh, one, one mentioned that when we say small scale here in Southeast Asia, we, we, we really mean it's small. You know? How small is small? Quarter of a hectare. You know? And some of them are even have smaller land area. So this is very appropriate for small scale producers. And of course, it encourages uh, diversity in the field and, uh, and at the organizational level because we encourage more stakeholders to, to work uh, in the PGS system. Uh, as product assurance, of course, it, uh, this is very important to establish consumer's trust um, because we, we know that there are many claims uh, that their products are organic, naturally grown, but sometimes consumer needs um, a credible and, and, and a product no, and producer with integrity. So PGS is, can, can uh, have that. And of course, this empowers farmers and stakeholders because uh, capacity building and um, trainings and um, are all built into the system. So farmers are the main actors uh, in PJS. Of course, as marketing tool, no, this strengthens the local market and supports the local economy. We, I, I saw we saw we also mix a uh, presentation and. We know how power, uh, how powerful uh, grassroots organization can be in changing in changing the food system. So, uh, with the PGS and with the local organization, farmers organization work on working together towards uh, PGS and and um, organic and agroecology. Uh, this can be a power to a powerful tool as well. And also, it provides diverse and of course affordable products to more consumers because products are mainly sold at the local level. So, yeah. And of course, this is essential for building sustainable food systems because we encourage a local food production and local consumption. There's not much um, carbon, carbon footprint here. No? So uh, that's, that's some of the benefits of doing PGS. Uh, 
Um, so at the global level, uh, there are thousands of PGS initiatives globally. Some of them are at the national scale, but some of them are also uh, local, no? small PGS initiatives. So globally, there are 242 PGS initiatives in uh, 78 countries in all five continents. You can see that um, millions of uh, small, small farmers are benefiting from PGS. And uh, producers, no? you can see that the hectare of land that has been certified and, and managed by these uh, PGS and organic producers are really big, no? And we can, you can see on the graph on, on your right side how the PGS and the PGS system have evolved and developed uh, rapidly, no? Since 2010 at, until 2021. So this is a quite fast movement. Uh, we can see that since uh, we all know that majority of the farmers in the world are small scale and are, they are benefiting from PGS systems. So in Asia, uh, maybe we can boast that we are still the region no, with the highest number of PGS producers than any other region in the world. With, uh, the, the increase has been steady. Uh, it has been growing since 2017. Uh, in, in, and the second one in terms of operational PGS, we are lagging you know, behind uh, Latin America because they have more operational PGS. We have operational PGS, mean, operational PGS uh, means that um, the, the structure is working and everybody, uh, and the structure is working basically. But uh, there are also a lot of uh, PGS under development. So meaning they are still working on how the structure uh, is, should be working on the ground. So we can also see that um, majority of the PGS certified producers and uh, are producers involved are from India. So there are like millions of farmers no, in India who are uh, doing PGS and have uh, PGS uh, certified by PGS. Uh, other initiatives from, in, uh, from Asia are from Laos, Myanmar, South Korea, and they also pose a, st a steady growth in terms of uh, producers. Uh, over the past years, and uh, Thailand and Philippines uh, have overall growth uh, of certified producers. Uh, we are so in Asia, there are a lot of development and steady growth in terms of PGS development and producers and producers involved. Yeah. So these are some of the PGS initiatives we have in Asia. I have been working with them uh, since uh, these PGS initiatives are in the network of uh, Inofo. So INOFO is the Intercontinental Network of Organic Farmers Organization. Uh, this is um, farmer uh, groups uh, inside the uh, IFOAM, uh, the International Federation of Organic Agriculture Movements. And most of the members are doing PGS and some of these are, uh, some of them no, are quite um, successful no, in implementing and uh, developing PGS. So we have Vietnam. So you can see in the slide that uh, they have 80 local PGS groups in nine provinces. And these are just in the uh, network of, of, of PGS Vietnam. So there are other PGS initiatives in, in, in Vietnam as well. So um, they have adopted this uh, QR code to go through into the uh, 80 outlets and malls. They are, selling, they are already selling their products um, in, into the malls. Um, and they are using QR codes, no? so digitalization is also. They are also doing digitalization and helping farmers to have to to have a better uh, information, no? and submit uh, communication among them. So in the Philippines, we have uh, PGS Filipinas. This is a network of PGS advocates, uh, PGSs, no, and um, other initiatives, uh, even the academe are also engaged in the PGS Filipinas network. So we have PGS, 16 PGS initiatives and, um, and uh, there are around 2,633 certified uh, producers with more than uh, 500 hectares of land. So you can see despite the number of uh, certified producers, the area you know, is still very small. So we, uh, because of you know the, the 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 characteristics of small scale farmers in the Philippines, and we have been 
now working with the national government for the expansion and uh, development of more PGS since uh, uh, we have amended our organic agriculture law to recognize PGS. So it happened in 2020 that uh, our government already recognized PGS. Yeah. So there, uh, in India, there are two national PGS initiatives. One uh, initiative is by the government from the Ministry of Agriculture and the PGS Organic Council. So the PGS Organic Council is also a network of PGSs, and uh, this is mainly um, uh, this is uh, the initiative you know, of the civil society organization in India. And uh, uh, overall, you know, they have posted around of around 1,171,224 you know, uh, certified uh, producers and uh, seven, 757,097 hectares of organic land. So you can see how the, the support from the government kickstart you know, the, the PGS development and engagement of producers uh, in India. So we, we also uh, dream of having uh, that kind of, of uh, movement you know, uh, of PGS initiative here in the Philippines, uh, now with the government working with us. So there's also the Sri Lanka uh, PGS group. Uh, it started as an NGO initiative, but the government is also very much involved in that initiative. And they have already established uh, the, their procedures and guidelines and working towards uh, recognition as well. <clears throat> so in Indonesia, uh, there are 12 PGS units. I hope I am correct. And uh, the product range from fresh and processed and organic inputs uh, and of course, uh, Pamor Indonesia you know, is, uh, is, uh, belongs to the Indonesia Organic Alliance. We have been working uh, very closely with Indonesia Organic Alliances. Uh, and, and one of the representatives of uh, IOA uh, sits at the Inofo uh, Council you know, as one of the um, convener you know, uh, in Southeast Asia. And of course, we have Taiwan. Uh, the PGS in Taiwan uh, works mainly um, with the indigenous groups. So this is initiated by an NGO uh, called the uh, um, uh, Taiwan Indigenous Peoples Development, you know, and they have this tribal yeah, tribal tribal e shop wherein the PGS um, uh, certified products are sold. So they are all over Taiwan, and uh, they have six indigenous farmers association. Uh, if you happen to be, visit Taiwan, you can see these tribal e-shops you know, in many parts of, of the country. Yeah. So what are the potentials? Uh, as we can see, the pandemic really exposed you know, the, the flaws of the current food system. Uh, Nick mentioned that, that the, the corporations are taking over you know, our food production from seeds to inputs to almost everything that we do in, 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 in agriculture. If they were even saying that uh, the uh, farming will no longer require farmers. You know? So it's like farming without farmers. You know? We were thinking, is that even, even possible? So, however, we also see during the pandemic that um, the, the consumers, are looking for uh, healthy you know, and, and uh, organic produce. So there are really big potential you know, for PGS and for, that, for organic agriculture. And for us in Masipag, we say that we should reclaim you know, the, the market that, that was taken over by these big corporations, by the conventional farming, farming system, by, by the market-driven food production system and uh, food uh, put farmers no, at the forefront of agriculture again, bring back organic agriculture, bring back agriculture at the hands of the farmers. So the potentials, no, we saw that there is an increasing demand for safe and healthy food uh, during the pandemic. There are a lot of concerns over the effect of chemical farming to, to our environment and its effect no, and, uh, and the impact and the worsening impact of climate change to to um, countries like us, you know? so we just like this April, 
it's supposed to be dry season here in the Philippines. We have, but we have a category five typhoon. No? So that's very disturbing, and we are really uh, vulnerable. You know? And um, of course, we also saw that there's a significant there's a significant increase in demand for organic products in retail sales because uh, of the uh, restrictions in the market and, and and people cannot go out so they have to buy online you no know, and and that uh, the retail market took advantage of that and uh, of course um, PJS groups also adopted digital system for the PJS integrity just like what they did in Vietnam and of course even the small farmers organization you no know, they they did online marketing scheme as tool to reach more consumers online and offline. So they have been doing that. And of course, the exchange, the knowledge exchange and seed exchange by farmers. We have seen a lot of that during the pandemic. And this is part of the PJS system as well, because PJS is not only about marketing. This is about solidarity among farmers. This is about um, working together at the community. So, uh, Seeds, knowledge, market are all included in, in the PJS system. But uh, of course, the civil society organization and the farmers uh, cannot do it by themselves. So uh, the government should, should, should support also, uh, the farmers as well and the movement as well. So they should provide an enabling environment for organic farmers to take advantage and maximize, of course, the opportunities and potential, not only at the local, but at the international uh, market no, level as well. Um, <clears throat> so what can the government do? Uh, of course, they can provide uh, capacity building activities, exposure to other site, exposure to other uh, PGS group, exposure to... Uh, you know, um, successful initiatives uh, within the country or outside the country. Uh, of course, when we say PGS, it's not only the, the committee, it's not only the technicalities of the, adapt the adoption and, and uh, what they do in PGS, but they also discuss about business, marketing, finance. So the government can also support that because they have all the resources, no? to support the farmers. And of course, PGS is also an organizational endeavor. No? So it doesn't stop uh, at the committee level, but uh, the organization must, must be strengthened for the sustainability of the PGS groups and the PGS itself. So for the market, they can establish local markets, um, establish, uh, they can also do linkaging, to the universities, the government institution, hospitals, no, uh, these are all consumers, and the government can can support the PGS groups by linkaging them to this um, institution, and of course, the, uh, facilitate transport. One of the uh, biggest challenge in in the PGS, no, and um, not only in PGS but the marketing system is the transportation. So uh, while initiate while starting, uh, the government can support that. Of course, the uh, the government can also support uh, technology transfer, provide uh, equipment and facilities that the farmers needed you know, to to really develop their PGS and their marketing system. Uh, they have a lot of resources, and of course, financing budget for uh, training and other capacity building and linkage to other institutions. So finally, and um, most importantly, they can provide. Uh, policies that can support PGS groups. The PGS recognition is uh, really vital, you know, and, and for the farmers, you know, to be able for them to be able to really engage and uh, continue with what they are doing. Um, uh, aside from the national uh, level recognition, local legislation you know, banning uh, uh, genetically modified crops, banning expansion of massive plantations and um, banning or even as simple as uh, uh, setting up you no know, markets and even uh, declaring organic zones you no know, to, pro to, to protect the organic farms and the farmers is will make will uh, do big you no know, for for the organization for the PGS group and for the organic 
uh, farmers. Um, with other related policies, uh, here in the Philippines, we are also um, calling for the government to, to stop you know, the further um, expansion of big plantations and even aerial spraying. It is quite uh, big here in the Philippines. So other related policies to support organic agriculture uh, are important. Yes. So this is my last slide, Aster. So Yeah. We okay. have to, sorry to say, the 20 minutes are over. Oh, I'm, so, I'm sorry. Anyway, this is just, and, yeah. Uh, we have, I uh, think, three um, farmers also sitting in, in the line to have for mm -hmm. our panel. So, yeah, please. Yes, so this is the conclusion. No? So, PJS is a platform to help establish organic agriculture as the only offshore for sustainable uh, farming systems. And, of, of course, part of climate change adaptation and mitigation strategies. Uh, there is a huge potential for PGS, both at the local and national, international market, uh, because of the need no, for health, organic and healthy food. And of course, government support, support is vital in attaining vi uh, viable livelihood for small-scale organic producers. No? Um, yeah, I already mentioned that. And of course, uh, appropriate, appropriate policies, PGS support and appropriate policies, policies. Uh, that complements the efforts of the farmers will do big uh, for for the movement to to really develop and and be like India. You know? So I think that's it. Uh, thank you very much, everyone, for listening.